Hello, this is Gabi from Blue Bonnet Crafters and I am so excited to be part of this year's Black Friday events at the Woolery. Um, and I'm trying to keep this video short. Um, yeah, I hear all of you who know me this is like, ha ha. I, I try, okay? So anyway, uh, this year's Black Friday sales at the Woolery um, will include one of our turtle looms and this one is the original size which means four inches side to side uh, but it has more pins as you can probably notice it has more pins than the original loom <coughs> that was featured at the uh, Christmas gifts last year um, and it has more pins so that you can weave thinner yarns and uh, thinner yarns means uh, sock or fingering yarns, some uh, also sport yarns that, you know, if you are a knitter, they are usually listed with 24 to 28 stitches per four inch. Uh, as an example, um, I have here the West Yorkshire Spinner Signature Sparkle 4-ply, uh, which happens to be this year's uh, holiday color and which also means that, um, or which also happens to be uh, available at the Woolery. So um, loom and sock yarn together will make, for example, there are many things that you can make, but um, when the Woolery asks, okay, um, what can you do with it? Um, I suggested to make the super easy sock yarn cowl. And uh, you can find that on turtleloom.com, but I will do a very quick walkthrough here um of the pattern so you will be making a cowl and all you need is really uh, one loom and one skein of yarn and go ahead and weave up 24 hexagons and i'm just holding those up here so that you can see i love the sparkle by the way um, but there are also some that don't have a sparkle of holiday colors and they are just, wow, they are all gorgeous and so soft. Um, anyway, uh, stay on topic, Gabby. So basically, I'm just flipping through here. Um, these 24 hexagons are woven on the fine set and um, with this yarn and just every single hexagon will look different. And you just weave them. There's no magic to it other than that you weave the regular hexagons as the yarn comes off the ball and take a look isn't that gorgeous and so much fun um so it, it looks like magic but it's really really super easy so you need 24 hexagons let me just make some space and now we are going to put them together you will make three rows of eight hexagons each Let's do just a quick preview of how to sew the hexagons together. Um, you can use the uh, yarn tails for sewing if you want, since they are there, it's kind of convenient. Um, and I do suggest that within the rows, you put the hexagons all in the same direction. For example, have the starting tail all turn up and the end tail all turn to the left or to the right. That's completely up to you. Um, the reason why I say this is because then you always, no matter where you are, have a thread to sew things together. So let's start with these two. I will use this thread here to start weaving them together. First we will, uh, uh, not weave, so um, first we will sew again, uh, the sides um, where you have been uh, weaving back and forth so they have these these complete turns you can see that right here all you need to do is match up the sides and then here's our thread and we thread the needle and then at the corner you secure so basically do one extra stitch here and then you can do a mattress stitch. Do you see how the, those turns line up here? Start with a turn in the front, go to the back, from the back hexagon, front hexagon, back hexagon, and just, you pick them pretty much just up like this. And even if you just have a normal tapestry needle like I do, 
um, it will be in long enough to just do this in one pass. If you feel more comfortable, you can do multiple pass. And also, um, if you don't like doing the metro stitch, you can just do a regular whip stitch, okay? So here's the last one in the corner. This is what it looks like on the needle. All right, and then pull it through and pull it a little bit apart just to give it the right uh, to give it the right uh, tension here. You can do one more securing stitch here on the end if you want. Okay, and then voila, it's it's done. Um, at this point, I don't sew in the ends and don't clip any ends because when we are done with this, we also we still want to do um, the three rows, uh, sew the three rows together. So um keep on doing this uh, next hexagon uh, goes over here same way eight hexagons in a row and make three rows all right here we are we have all three rows with eight hexagons each uh, sewn together they, they don't really fit onto the screen so I have them a little bit scrambled up but um you can see a little bit one two three four five six seven eight what it what the whole thing looks like and now what we're going to do is we are sewing those strips or rows together all right let's uh, start with the first two and I'll take this one out for now just to keep it a little bit more um, Okay. I'll show you one more thing right now. Um, we're going to sew these rows together or strips together and um, it doesn't really matter how you move them together. So you could um, sew them together that you have them slanted like this or you can sew them together that they are going a little bit zigzag like this. Um, I will use um, the slanted way because that works out with the with the yarn that we have available um, so let's just take two strips here again we're going to use the um, yarn ends for sewing take care of this and if you are annoyed by too many uh, threads you can absolutely weave them and, and just use a separate uh, piece of yarn um, for sewing particularly with this yarn because uh, no matter what color you have it doesn't matter it will always look good right so let's zoom in all right oh yeah we said we want to do it like this so I'm taking this is uh, the start tail from the first hexagon here of the first row and then that's how we want to so we're going to sew this area right here and you just pick up the sides and match them up like this and then you secure with a stitch here on the corner at the corner and then you just whip stitch whip stitch along that edge and what you can do is if you can see this um, like one two so i'm showing you here you just take the turns one from the back hexagon and one from the front and sew them together with a whip stitch like this. You make three stitches and then you skip the next couple of turns and go one, two, three, skip, one, two, three the next two 
and then at the end you know it may vary but i have like one two and then that one goes into the corner and then you can turn and weave in like six to eight stitches six stitches like this and then you can actually clip that that thread let me see yep that looks good so continue doing this for all the hexagons in this strip and then take the next strip and do the same for the third strip and i'll see you when you're done welcome back and here we are with having the three strips sewn together and you can already start uh, seeing uh, the fabric that's that's coming together again this is like uh, it doesn't fit the screen so i have a fold here and i'll show you this that that's what it looks like right now and if you look at the ends uh, your ends may look slightly different I kind of cascaded the three strips like one two three yours might kind of look zigzag here on this side um, if you start it with uh, one hexagon over here let me just show you what I mean so your end might look something like this um, it really doesn't matter because all you will do in this last step is um, so this end and this end together um, right now what you're looking at is kind of the wrong side and you can see that where you uh, have sewn in the yarn ends and so uh, what we want to do is having the wrong side facing out um, which means the, the right side is facing in and then you match up um, the ends right here again this is like wrong side facing out right side facing in there is really no big difference the only difference that you will see is where you have sewn in the ends um, so if you are not sure just do it anyway and you'll be just perfectly fine and then uh, the last step is that we close the cowl by sewing uh, along this uh, this edge and sewing the two ends together to form the cowl. Um, I'm going to do this in a minute, but I want to show you one more thing. Um, the fabric now looks kind of a little bit like um, a crazy plate, but you could also um, use your hexagons in any direction uh, you feel like and I sewed up a few extra ones and we'll just put them up here to to show you a few options that you have oh no this is like yeah here we go that's what I wanted to show and this one let's move this this way so you can see they can go pretty much in any direction let me zoom in here a little bit and then you have kind of a really crazy cowl with, with where the fabric goes or where the pattern goes in all in all kinds of directions. It's an option. I just wanted to quickly show it to you right here. Um, but now let's just sew along this one final edge to finish the cowl. Ta-da! Here's your cowl or at least it starts to look like a cowl. It's all uh, joined now and it's in the round. And at this point, or um, just uh, for your information, to get an idea, uh, it's about, the cowl is about uh, 13 and a half inches wide, which is uh, 27 all around, and about 10 inches um, high. So uh, I'm saying this here because uh, you can very easily, instead, uh, if you want it a little bit wider, you can, for example, instead of eight uh, hexagons, have nine hexagons in a row, 
or if you want it wider and taller you could add another strip of hexagons here um but that's kind of the standard cowl and um it's not too snug uh it has some drape to it the way it is um but i just wanted to let you know that you have these options what we still need to do is um so in any remaining ends and uh, let's do that right now all right here we are tada your cowl is all done let's turn it right side out oh yes i hope you can see this the the fabric is just absolutely amazing the yarn is light squishy and has a beautiful drape um i will not do it for this cowl but if you want you could crochet a single crochet border around along the edges uh, it's absolutely not necessary um, i actually like the way it looks uh, without crochet but if you are a crocheter or you like it uh, with a crochet border you can certainly do so um, i just want to give you a few tips here let's zoom in a little bit if you decide you want to crochet i suggest you start in the middle of one edge somewhere uh, attach the yarn with uh, a slip stitch and then work single crochet when you get to um, a yarn turn like this uh, not a hexagon turn like this uh, so you come down here work a single crochet single crochet and then bind them off together so it's two single crochet together and then along uh, an edge you work single crochet single crochet single crochet and skip single 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 skip single 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 skip and then you have one or two more singles before you get to the tip so you have about 10 or 11 stitches of single crochet you skip a few so that it doesn't bulge out when you crochet when you get to the tip you work two single crochets into the tip of a hexagon and then you continue to keep going all around um i hope so basically I will not do that for this cowl. Um, but if you want, that's definitely an option. Um, you have, you definitely have enough yarn. So one ball of um, the West Yorkshire Spinner Signature Sparkle uh, is enough to make two cowls. That means one for you and one to give away for the holidays. Um, the only last thing that you need to do or that I suggest you do is uh, block your cowl. Uh, it will kind of uh, fluff up the yarn a little bit and um, will settle the weaving and uh, the, the sewing. Um, I use Eucalyn for that and actually it's funny because I just went to the Wooloo website and yes yeah, sure of course they sell the Eucalyn. Um, so you can do a one-stop shop. You can get the uh, the, the loom uh, and the yarn and the ukulele all uh, at the Woolery in, in one uh, transaction if you want. All right. Um, I hope you found this uh, quick pattern walkthrough uh, beneficial. Um, if you have any questions about the loom or the weaving or the cowl, uh, go to turtleloom.com um, and, and contact us any way uh, you can think of, uh, email or Facebook or Ravelry or through, or through our blog. Um, I'm absolutely happy to help you with anything uh, that you need. And um, for now, I hope you will enjoy crafting, weaving and that you will have a wonderful holiday season.